this field of energy created around them, which we call double layers and different uh, and firmament. Okay. Now we go through here again. You can see pictures, and if you notice this picture, it looks extremely similar to the experiment of some lessons we showed earlier. But instead of a jar in a lab filled with uh, hydro, uh, filled with sulfuric acid, we see here in space the plasma of the plasma sphere from the sun that's ejected from the sun, and we see the jar that is the firmament around it. Outside of that is what Sabir Sakar would call a void or an area of low density. This doesn't mean there's nothing there, it just means that compared to what's inside the bubble, it is a low density space. Okay, and that creates another firmament, but that's what we've been showing you. All right. So you have a visualization of this, and what we observe in the sun, we see the sun's corona. It's corona that is. That's what we see. This is what it's like. This is the inside of the sun. We know that the inside of the sun, as we explained earlier, is many sound waves. And everything that's in the sun's influence has to uh, react and come on to the that way. This is a line that's filled with ionized gas.
that they are set there, all 70 sextillion of them that we've mapped so far, or 70 million million of them, to give life upon the earth, that we may observe them. That's why they're there. Okay. The implications of this theory. All the missing matter is tied up in dense fields of plasma contained in the firmament. So now we can explain all the missing matter in the universe. Explains in simpler terms the observed gravity bending, lensing of light, or the relativistic effects of light. It incorporates the varying speed of light theory as it travels through different mediums. The light changes speed, is reflected, diffracted, absorbed, or transmitted, plus observations and experimentation relating to the varying speed of light. The attenuation factor of the universe is a parameter related to the distance to a horizon beyond which we cannot see, formally called the moment of the Big Bang. That's what I do out here. This is as far out as we can see. This is like, I forget what the time is, but that's not important. This is as far out as we can see to the beginning of the universe, to where the universe supposedly began with the Big Bang. Okay? This is the far, this is the Attenuation factor. Attenuation, remember the eggs, the farther the egg was away, the less light was seen on the past egg. That's this factor right there. And this is the diagram you see of the Big Bang. The darkest you can see is the darkest point. That is the, the attenuation factor where we cannot see any farther. This does not mean that there's not more out there. This just means this is as far as we can see. All right. Beyond what we can see, that is the moment of the Big Bang. The moment of the Big Bang coincides with its attenuation factor as it's moving through different mediums in the universe. It solves the reconciliation of Genesis to the supposed billions of years starlight problem. Of course, as we looked out through these different mediums, it would appear to be farther away, closer away. We would not see it exactly where it is, just like looking through a pond on the Earth. It's that, that simple. Replaces the theories of relativity, Big Bang, space expansion paradigm, and the speed of light constant. This theory will replace, or could replace, all of those. It gives us a better understanding of gravity and its role in the universe. Mainly, that gravity is the compression of a sound wave in space, the strongest point being the magnetic, magnetic poles of the object itself. So, that's what we're talking about the sun makes the sound wave. That's the pole of the sun. What does it mean? All right, and get to, let's say, the Earth. Then you have the poles of the Earth. But the Earth also emits its own tone or sound. But it's sort of sound, as I said, it has to operate in the army. This is the strongest compression of the sound wave. And as you move out of space, there's going to be this relative uh, void of the space, like some years apart. It's going to be less dense than this position because all the particles are going to be attracted by gravity because of the compression of the sound wave. So it's going to be attracted to dense locations, not dense locations, dense locations. And this is what we see as the pond, as, as the drop of the pond moves outward in concentric surface. Very simple expression. This is where gravity comes from. Now, the gravity is the compression of a sound wave of space. The strongest point being the magnetic poles of itself, of the object itself. Such compression of space causes vortexing, which in turn initiates spin and rotation. And this is what we observe as attraction of objects towards each other. They get into this vortex. Now, I'll get to this later, but on the quantum level, this thing is like sitting around really fast down here. But on our level, do you get it? It's very fast down here on a quantum level. At our level, its speed only appears to be going this speed. It's exactly how tornado works. It's exactly how tornado works. I'm going to get to this a little bit too. But anyway, that's exactly how gravity causes compression too. It's called spin. When you get into this, every time you go somewhere, it creates these fields. And when you get into the influence of these parts of spin, something that happens quickly, some things are attracted more slowly, but they're all attracted in harmony with everything else. This explains the time differences in relativity experiments which I explained earlier on the platform. So, in a mountain, let's say you're on a mountain, you take a time measurement up here, you take a time measurement down here, this time measurement down here is going to be much faster than a time measurement up here. If you spend time in outer space, you age slower than 
you're spending time on the earth. Why is this? Because this phenomenon is displaying you right here. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Um, now, this displays time differences and relativity experiments. We are in a space in the earth, inside a firmament, of very tight compression, allowing time to pass very quickly. In the sun's frame of reference, the rhythm at which it compresses space, which we talked about earlier, moving to the rhythm of the sun, the rhythm in which it compresses space is only once every 278 hours. The human heart compresses space at approximately 70 to 80 beats per minute. So that's the difference. All right? This is why we age at the speed we do. This is why the sun ages at the speed it does. Why planets age at the speed they do. It is all based on these phenomena. The compression and rarefaction of space at certain Hertzian frequencies. All right, ultimately, this theory tells us exactly why we cannot see God. Because God is the background seal of light in whom there is no variance, no time or space. And this is why we cannot see God. This is why we cannot understand where He came from or try to, to uh, explain those kind of things. Well, what made God? Where did He come from? All right, because we can only explain things based on our frame of reference as we're looking out. We can't explain the background sea of light. We know it's there, but we cannot explain where it comes from, how it came into existence, or the quality of that thing, of that being.